So uh, first off, Lex, you mentioned that you have a background, your educational background includes uh, a degree in Islamic studies. Can you tell us a little bit more about your educational background, where you did that, when you did that, etc.? Okay. Hello? Is it, is it on? Is it, is it on? No? Not on. Hello, hello. There we go. Okay, super. Um, yes? Um, I have a degree in Islamic Studies from the Evergreen State College in Washington State and I received that degree in 2003 and I also have a degree in Applied Linguistics from the University of Canberra, Australia which I received in 2011. 2012. <laughs> Not so good with years. Okay, um, so obviously today's talk is about books. Tell us a little bit about your personal reading habits. When, where, how often, <laughs> how do you read? I usually read five books at a time. Um, I read approximately 60 to 100 books a year. Um, I read a lot in the bathtub. In the bathtub. Um, I read on the bus. I read in the living room. Um, I have different books around my house in different parts of the house. So I have like a bathtub book and a bedroom book and like three living room books. Um, I've got them all going at different times. Um, my grandmother was a librarian. <laughs> I, I learned the ha habit, have habit from my mom and my dad and my family, who would all prefer to read books rather than watch TV. Okay, so is there any standard or special way that you go about choosing a book? Nonfiction. Is there any special or standard way you go about choosing a nonfiction book? <laughs> nope. Oh, uh, although, however, um, when I sometimes uh, oh, there was there was an instance where I lived in America and um, I moved into a new town and I walked into the library on the first day and I just started on this side. And I went through every shelf like that. Oh. <laughs> right? Um, which can be very boring when you get to a topic that you're not especially interested in, like plants. Um, but you've got to press on. You've got to go through the plant section. Because sometimes it could be important information later. I know a lot about Down syndrome now because I read an entire section about Down syndrome at the library. And you, you mentioned that you prefer nonfiction. Is there any form of fiction that you do enjoy or care to read? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I read my first fiction book actually here in Korea in 2008, and it was Charles Dickens. Um, but I don't really like it. <laughs> Um, so your talk today is about uh, the books you've read here at the GIC. Are there any uh, are there any few books you could recommend that you've read in your pre-GIC library life? Yeah, um, I said that this is my favorite book. This is actually one of two favorite books. My actual favorite book is not here, and it is called. Um, the Shtetl of Eshishok, a 500-year chronicle, um, and it's a 500-year history of a village in Russia which no longer exists because it was wiped out during World War II. And there's a woman, um, a, a Jewish woman in America, who um, went back and found every existing piece of information about that village and put together this massive book about um, 
the 500 year history of a village that no longer exists. Now, you mentioned that you prefer uh, nonfiction books because they're real. Yeah. However, you also mentioned that you prefer to read about some rather weighty, serious topics. Yeah. So how do you manage the stress from reading such serious books like the book about gulags? that I manage the stress of reading about very heavy topics with art. Um, along with reading, um, I also have a personal practice of art, and I usually spend between one and five hours a day painting. And so usually when I'm in my house, I'm alternating between reading and painting. I read, and then I process while painting, and then I read and then I process while painting. Uh, you mentioned one of the times that you felt uh, a very re relatable uh, feeling or experience was reading the Camp 14 book. Do you have any other examples when you felt a particularly strong connection to a book you've read? Mm -hmm. Not like that. Mm -hmm. Not like that. Um. <laughs> no, that was that was the most. That was that was that was um, that was just a, an, an immensely huge, huge moment in my life. Uh, now the books all here are physical books in the GIC library. Do you also read e-books? And can you give us your thoughts in general about e-books versus physical books? I would feel bad taking an e-book in the bathtub. <laughs> um, but I love listening to audiobooks. In America and in Australia, when I drive, I'm always listening to audiobooks. Um, there are thousands of audiobooks that you can get free online. Um, Audible is a fantastic website that you can use to um, purchase and download audiobooks. Um, I, um, I, I like e-readers, I, but I think that the books in three formats, audio, e-readers, and tangible book books, um, they all have their benefits and they all have their downsides, <coughs> but they all have information. So you've mentioned a few books that you've donated to the GIC. How big is your own personal library? Oh, it's all here now. Okay. <laughs> um, um, I have a couple. I have a couple boxes of books in the United States, but um, I I don't need to carry them with me because usually I rely on libraries. Um, every every place that I've gone. Um, every city I've lived in, the library is my second home. Um, we have a question about, uh, I guess it's a little speculation on your part. Being so familiar with the library here at the GIC, what do you think that the donations to the GIC library generally say about the foreign population here in Guangzhou? What can you extrapolate from looking at the books foreigners have donated. That's a really good question. It certainly is. It's not mine. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, to the person who asked that question, that is a fantastic question. I would say based on the books that I've seen upstairs, I would say that there is a lot of interest in spirituality, religion, but also in murder. There's a lot of crime books upstairs. Um, and uh, I put murder in the category of fantasy. Um, you, you just have learned, I'm being very vulnerable, I am a massive nerd. Um, and I usually hide this 
mega intellectual part of myself. Um, so I'm just really sharing my, my heart with you here. Um, yeah, upstairs I see a lot of, of religious um, seeking and a lot of interest in like fantasy and murder. Interesting. <laughs> uh, we just have time for one more question today. Uh, if we, I didn't have time to ask all of the questions, if you had a question that we weren't able to ask today during the Q&A session, please feel free to come up and talk to Lex directly after the talk. She's already expressed not only a willingness, but an eagerness to speak with anyone and everyone after the talk. So, uh, one last question, Lex. Um, you mentioned one of your favorite authors, Simon Winchester, was uh, something that you felt was lacking from the GIC library. Could you maybe recommend one or two other books that you haven't been able to find here in the GIC library that you just think every library should have? One or two. <laughs> No, I can't, but I would say that that Simon Winchester book, it's called A Walk Through the Land of the Morning Calm, and it follows the history of, I'm, I'm going to guess that his, Hamel, Jan Hamel, he came to Korea in the 1700s, his boat crashed down near uh, Yosu, uh, in, uh, in Jejudo, and then he came to Yosu, and he was from the Netherlands. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes, yes, yeah, 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 yeah. And um, it, follows, it follows his walk up through um, Naju and all the way up to Seoul. So Simon Winchester um, walks across Korea and talks about the history of this man and these people on this boat and uh, the first exposure of Korea to a European audience when he eventually, 13 years later, goes back home and writes a book about his experience in Korea in the 1700s. There's a great museum down in Yosu about this man's life. Okay. Well, that's all the time we have for questions today. Let's give Lex one more round of applause for answering our questions.